this is Kaki King and this is Sound Advice. Today I'm going to talk to you about using a metronome both for composition and and ways that you can you know use a metronome to help you work through your own uh, things that you're writing. And also uh, we're going to look at a little piece just to show you how you can use a metronome to slow down a piece on, on a song and work your way up to where it is at speed. This is a song called um, <clears throat> Holding the Severed Self. I wrote it in 2012 or so. And it has this really tricky part that I, I had to set to the side in order to finesse it. So those harmonics were very, very tricky. I wanted to nail them. And not only do I have to do the flourish with my right hand, I also have to reach over and grab that one on the 12th fret. So it's kind of a whole mess in there. So what I started to do when I began able, you know, I knew, I knew that's how the, the figure was gonna look and how the phrasing was gonna work, but I really had to go slow and practice it. And so I started somewhere really slowly. This is 70. And I just worked there until I had it at 70. I understood exactly where my hands were going, exactly what was happening. And yes, it felt a little bit awkward. It doesn't flow, it doesn't feel good. So I'm just gonna go ahead, bump it up to 90. Let's see how it feels. Now, it may look easy, and it does feel easy for me now, but this process took a really long time. It probably took, you know, a few weeks. Um, eventually, once I could play that part normally, it became, you know, it became important that I figure out what is the actual tempo for this song. So I ran all the way up to, I'm gonna go up to 170. I love these metronome apps because they're ubiquitous and they're super simple. The simpler, the better. So here's just a crazy speed. But it's kind of lost the musicality. I'm gonna bump it back down. And the reason why this is important is because you're kind of discovering, you're letting the song, you know, do what it needs to do. So I'm back down to 140. doesn't have that flow to it. So 70, 170 is too fast, 140 is too slow. I'm gonna take it up to about 155. You know, and it, it's funny, because that sounds really fast to me. I'm like, that, that just doesn't sound like the pace of anything. But when I put the song to it, it sounds pretty cool. So you can use a metronome while composing in order to really, really get those um, those tricky parts that you know that you love, that you know that you want. I teach a lot of students, and and they come to me with their compositions, and I'm like, everything's great, but this these this, you've had a, you have a passage in there that you really aren't playing at competency. You wrote it, and yet it, you can't actually play it. And this is just a good way to go back and pick through it and understand exactly what it is, and slowly bump that BPM up. It doesn't have to be the whole song. I do think, ultimately, using a metronome in my writing, in my composing, in the work, has led me to a place where I can internalize certain tempos um, if I have to. For instance, I do a lot of work with video now, and often I'll just have a cue to start, and I need to play a song live on the guitar to a video that's a very specific length, and I need to play, if I play the exact BPM that, I sh that the video is, was synced to, um, I will start and finish at the exact same place every single time. The only way that that was possible, again, I'm, I'm doing this without any ears, without any kind of cueing, the way that is possible is because I just played 
the song over and over, over and over to the same BPM until it just felt like, you know, I, one click was too fast, one click was too slow. I, re I knew exactly where I was um, in terms of how fast that song should be. Another way it's useful is that if you have a, a, a rubato part of your song where it kind of slows down a bit, um, if you have a part that kind of, you know, there's a little sweetness to it. And you need to get right back in eventually. Two, three, four. It's nice to be able to know and have the confidence that the BPM you started with is going to be the BPM that you end with. Um, I think another tricky thing about being a guitar player, especially when you want to do something more technical and more cool, is that we just start playing way too fast. And I've watched many performances of myself where I am going way over what is musical and just into territory that's a little bit, you know, um, <laughs> just showing off for no one's sake. So I think, you know, again, it feels easier to play. It feels good to play fast, right? We like it. it it's a feeling in our fingers of agility and, and, and skill, and yet it doesn't serve a musical purpose always. So getting that BPM and knowing that's where that song needs to sit is super, super helpful and just you know, doesn't need to be more complex than, you know, a 99 cent app that's on your phone. I also wanted to talk about learning songs with a metronome. Um, because, again, you know, things can be trickier than, you, you know, so, something that you want to get into can sound kind of hard. So I wanted to learn a track. I wanted to learn Sweet Judy Blue by Crosby, Stills & Nash. And I ended up in this awesome open E tuning. And, um, you know, it has this opening phrase. But at first I was like, wait a minute. No, that's not it. My instinct is to play the song at the speed the song was written. The speed that I'm listening to it. But ultimately, you know, I need to slow it down. How do I do it? Well, let's figure out where the song feels good. And there's also this out. It's about 150 or so. Too tricky for me. I'm going to slow it down to 105. And really kind of understand what is happening. Honestly, sometimes it doesn't take that much. Let's bump it up to 120. Not too happy with myself there. I'm going to go back down to 110. So once you've mastered it at a certain BPM, you can bump it up. But if you go too fast, too fast, then you go too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a little example of how you can get your metronome going and just, you know, use it as a tool for yourself. It's like a little guide, just saying, you know, you can quantify your progress. You can know where you want to be. You can set a goal, you know, a sweet spot for a song or the original tempo of a song you're learning. And, you know, really use these, these fairly simple, super helpful devices to get yourself to that place. I also just think that having, you know, knowing your BPM, knowing how to, how to stay on, you know, stay, it, it's incredibly helpful for recording because all of a sudden when you go into a studio and you're playing to a click track, it's like you've been doing it your whole life. And, you know, in addition, really, once you start to really, really feel tempos, you'll notice in your live playing, um, et cetera, that you're not wildly off from the beginning to the end of a song, which I think is kind of a little bit of something that happens in the beginning. Um, and it also, you know, I think most importantly, it really defines the musicality of a song for yourself, where, again, the tendency for a guitar player is just to, you know, get faster and better and faster and better 
go back a little and be like, this actually sounds really good at this sweet spot at 130, at 150, whatever it ends up being. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.